Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gav Major and this is a review of the German Tier 7 Premium Destroyer, the ZF6, available as the end reward of the Shock and All campaign if you have Amity backing. Now this is a Tier 6 and 7 game of Domination on Greece. On the enemy team we have an Akatsuki, a Kagera, a Levantast, a Lightning, Atlanta, Cleveland, a Leon, Colorado, Turpis. So all of their cruisers are radar cruisers. Uh, furthermore, um, the Lightning does have sonar, so that's uh, something to be concerned about if we do end up in the Destroyer Brawl. So the Zero 6 isn't a complete work of fiction. Uh, she is a German design for a conversion and completion of Le, a French Le Hardy class destroyer into uh, German service. Uh, the project was also later known as the Z of 2. Now the works in the whole were never completed and the ship was actually demolished in 1944 and uh, scrapped after the war. Now uh, the design did call for uh, two quadruple torpedo launchers and five single gun mounts or five inch guns in gun shields however we do have fully enclosed gun turrets in game and a uh, slightly different turret arrangement to what was actually requested and drawn up which I, I guess um, it just basically means that Wargaming have taken some liberties with the actual design of this uh, destroyer. So, in comparison to the Tech Tree Tier 7 Destroyers, um, solubility, you have the 4 flows HP, uh, it's just below average dome, which is 17,000. You've also got the typical tin can armor skin, uh, which is basically maximum of 20mm thick on the hull, and basically it goes downhill from there, I guess you could say. Artillery wise, she does have 5 number 5 inch guns, but rather than uh, single gun mounts with gun shields, they're actually in fully enclosed turrets and we do have a mix of single gun and dual gun. So A turret up front is a dual gun turret, whereas uh, P turret, X turret, Super Fire Nova, Y turret uh, are all uh, single gun mounts. Now um, P turret does generally face forward and um, therefore you can kind of bring three guns forward uh, or forward-ish and uh, two guns aft. Only two guns directly forward though. Now these guns do have the second fastest reload of 4 seconds, third slowest turret traverse speed of 18.3 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation, and then when it comes to the shells, uh, you're looking at the second lowest HE shell damage, the uh, second lowest fire chance, so the HE shell damage is only 1400, the fire chance is only 6%, so um, that's not uh, lots to be shouting about. When it comes to the AP shell damage though, you do have the second highest AP shell damage of 2950. Uh, yeah, let's use an engine boost. Now when it comes to the DPMs, obviously as can be expected, I guess you could say, from the um, from the shells. Uh, what is that? Is that Cleveland? That is a Cleveland. Hmm. Bit of a pickle to find myself in. Maybe if we just position ourselves on the back of this lot, we might be able to catch them out. But yeah, so DPM wise, um, fourth lowest HE DPM, uh, second lowest fires per minute. That's what you probably should come to expect from the high explosives. Uh, when it comes to the A armor piercing, though, you are looking at the second best in AP DPM basically. I think I might stop here and see what's going on. I think a, a couple of wide torpedo spreads might catch whatever's in that smoke out. Now, when it comes to the torpedoes, um, two quadruple torpedo launchers mounted on the centre line, quite reasonable angles as you can see. Um, which way is that Cleveland going? Oh boy. Where's he going now? Oh, there goes the love and task. That's good. Cleveland's changed his mind. Okie dokie. Cleveland has most certainly changed his mind. I need to get away from him. <laughs> the joys of reviewing our book. Things go change very quickly. Hmm. Okay, we can survive for 44 seconds. We might be able to get away with doing a torpedo rush on the Cleveland. Um, but he's now wares of us, however, let's see if we can get rid of the um, Kagero. Right, um, so these have the, these torpedoes do have the third uh, fastest, or joint third fastest, um, launcher reload, which is 90 seconds for the entire launcher. Uh, this does give them the joint fastest torpedo 
load per tube. Um, that's basically the reload time for launch divided by the tube. Um, now, these torpedoes do have the joint second highest torpedo damage of 18,400 and the second largest detection range of 1.8 kilometers. So they will be seen from a good distance off. Um, they do have the shortest range, um, only uh, 8 kilometers. Obviously, I guess if you want to compare to an unupgraded Tashkent, then maybe you could say you've got the second uh, shortest range, but um, the Tashkent's uh, torpedo range can be upgraded. So, as always, I'm always doing the comparison against a fully upgraded ship, because that's what most people are aiming for, I guess you could say. Now, um, these torpedoes are actually really quite fast. You're looking at about 76 knots, which is actually... Nothing to really complain about, I guess you could say. They are quite nippy, and with their speed and the detection range, um, enemies will still have an above average time to respond to these torpedoes, I guess is a bit of a downside. Now, when it comes to the maneuverability, you are the uh, joint uh, slowest, or joint second slowest, I should say, with a top speed of only uh, 35 knots. Um, you have an above average turning circle as well, which is 670 meters, but you do have an average rudder shift, which is 3.9 seconds. When it comes to the concealment, your joint second best by sea, which is uh, 6.8 kilometers, joint best from the air, which is 3.1 kilometers, but you are above average when firing from smoke, which is 2.6 kilometers, but uh, that will only really matter when you come to close engagements. Regarding the uh, consumables, you do have two engine boosts which improve your engine speed by 8% uh, for 120 seconds. This should take your base speed up from 35 knots to 37.8 knots during that time. Now this does have a 180 second reload and 120 second duration. Smoke consumable, uh, you do get two of these. These have a 20 second duration, that's how long it takes to lay a smoke screen, and a 69 second dispersion, that's how long the smoke screen is going to sit around for. Uh, it does have a 240 second reload, and uh, really the best way to say, put, or put it, I should say, is it's exactly the same as the Z23. Now, this can be swapped out for a defensive AA fire consumable, however, that consumable you only get one charge of. This will improve your AA defense by 200%, uh, well, AA damage, I should say, for 40 seconds, uh, but only has 150 second reload. Only getting one of them isn't that amazing. Um, and so, it doesn't really make sense to swap it out. You're swapping out a smoke screen, which is universal in all games, to a consumable that can only be used when there's a carrier. Um, and you're only going to get one of those consumables, where at least you're going to get two smoke screens. So really, I think just stick with the smoke traps. Now, as a German destroyer, you do not come with sonar, which is a bit of a pity. But you do come with a main battery reload booster, as per se, the French destroyers. Now, this will reduce your main battery reload time by 50% for a duration of 15 seconds, and has 150 second reload should you uh, somehow manage to get an extra one. But most cases, you're only going to be having one of these consumables. Now, as always, down in the description will be the command build and the uh, modules taken. Modules taken, aiming systems module 1, propulsion module 2, concealment systems module 1, and the main battery module 3. It's pretty much the, uh, what I'd say is the standard, uh, like, takers. Now, as a premium ship, she does come with a Type 9 permanent camouflage, which is quite nice. Um... Yeah, it was quite pretty, I, I give it that. Um, and that obviously does mean that you're not having to use any of those consumable camouflages or do any conversions. Pardon me. So, um, that's practically the end of the review from reading out the book. We've only managed to do 10,000 damage and get two kills, uh, but they're both on destroyers, which are quite weak. Those two battleships are moving away. That battleship's moving in, but is quite kitey. But we might as well just launch those. We have the Atlanta. The Atlanta's on a low amount of HP. So, potentially, if I wanted to, I could go, go guns on against the Atlanta with my main battery reload booster and probably win, um, considering the amount of HP he's got and the amount of HP I've got. So, that could be an opportunity. I think, yeah, if our battleships over here, can the Colorado and the Odin, can form a crossfire on the Turpets and the Colorado, we should be all right. Ideally, I would like the Atlanta to be broadside on. I guess we can't have everything. Hmm. I might do a test shot and see. 
I don't want to waste any much reload booster. Yeah, getting mostly bounces is expected. I'm trying to aim for the superstructure at the top. We are getting some chip damage there. Ah, there we go. Mm, Turbis has seen us, but she doesn't seem to be too concerned. Gonna just chuck some torpedoes out in the anticipation that she's gonna go wide. The secondary is knocked the engine module out, but I'm not too concerned about that as I am taking unstoppable. Just like could maybe actually pop a smoke screen here. She is broadside onto us, actually. Ooh, I think my torpedo prediction was quite good. Can't complain about that, right? Leon. Okay, we're well, gonna. Uh, ooh, that's the end of the game. <laughs> I was thinking of reversing to the back of my smoke screen and maybe seeing if I could use a reload boost on the on the Leon, but um, game's actually finished on points. I think, obviously, we managed to grab all four caps, so that ticked over quite quickly. A single devastating strike, uh, four kills. Um, I believe those kills are quite well, quite low HP kills. Um, getting a couple of caps, a couple of gummy battery. Now, as you probably noticed, I used AP throughout that gameplay. The reason being is I'm finding the AP on the ZF6 is a lot more effective than the high explosive. Um, it's just obviously the AP has the chance to bounce and things like that, but against a broadside target, um, the AP is probably really quite good. Um, even against destroyers, ironically, only against bowing targets, so you really feel like you may, might have to switch to high explosive. Um, but or if you're trying to get a fire, I guess you could say. Uh, team results. Even though I wouldn't say I was a great performance, still managed to come top of the team. Probably through not really like the damage dealing kind of side of it, but probably through the spotting and obviously the um, the capping. We did we managed to get um, three of the caps and uh, no spotting ribbons there, but probably just general spotting as well. Uh, Comy screen managed to walk away with a profit of two hundred and ninety nine thousand credits. That's after a ship service cost of one hundred and forty four thousand credits, but that is with a premium cap and a rare credit booster, which improves my credit earnings by twenty percent. So all in all, ZF six, I'd say. Guns are alright, but you kind of have to choose your ammunition. A torpedo is a fast and hard hitting but short range. Um, survivability is average. Maneuverability feels a little bit lethargic. She hasn't really got any tricks up her sleeve apart from the I win button, but you're only going to get one of those. Um, I'd say she's a, a general all rounder. I wouldn't exactly say my socks have been blown off, but I wouldn't exactly say she's not worth having at the same time. She's definitely an interesting destroyer for tier 7, and she's one of the very few premium destroyers for tier 7. So if you want to come try and compare it to the other um, premiums, um, she just she is what she is. Um, you attach a torpedo boat, and Zero Six seems to be a bit more like a, a gunboat hybrid. Uh, Paolo Emilio feels more like a, uh, a light cruiser. Um, so yeah, I think she fits in quite nicely at the tier, and personally I'd say I'm going to probably play the ZF6 more than I play the Udachi. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this, and if you have, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this content, content feel free to subscribe, and I'd like to say thank you, obviously, to the Patreons who support the channel and is an unmonetized channel. Um, their names will be appearing on the end screen. Down in the description will be the commander build, the ship modules, the email address to the channel if you want to send any of your own game captures from the Monday Spotlight video, and also a uh, link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, as is, as I've already mentioned, a non-monetized channel. Until next time, I'm Gav Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the galaxy Major. Bumpety, 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 bumpety. Get out of the way there, you fellas. Unless you want me to run you down.